everyone, I'm Jo Fry and this is my channel Jojo Fry Rocks and today we're going to be talking about the drop D tuning. Um, I'm not kind of going to go into a lot about all the different kind of open tunings um, that you can do on the guitar. Um, I'm just going to look at this particular phenomenon of the use of drop D um, because it's very interesting to me the way in which it kind of links a lot of the music that I love but which is very very different so in that um, short intro section that I just played um, I played the most of the riff and and the kind of verse and chorus of a song called Growing On Me by The Darkness. Um, it's a very kind of classic rock song. Um, and it's it's a great, great song. It's, it's my favourite Darkness song, actually. Um, and it's in drop D. And, um, you know, then I kind of went into my favourite Nirvana song, which is Heart Shaped Box, um, which is also in drop D, but the two sound very, very different indeed. And um, they almost, you almost couldn't get two more different songs. And I wanted to just try to kind of explore today, what is it about um, drop D that is so appealing in terms of um, the composition of, of a song, I suppose. Um, why is it so popular, particularly in, in rock music? Um, and what are the kind of qualities that, um, you know, that, that down tuning that E string to a D, you know, just that very simple thing. Um, what is it about doing that, that, that gives you these, um, these very kind of different effects and sort of opens up musical possibilities that, you know, that you perhaps wouldn't have had in a standard um, E tuning. So um, I will kind of briefly touch on, you know, where did it come from? Who first started using drop D? Um, you know, how, how did it get kind of into mainstream rock? Um, how did it become popular? And and what is it that actually kind of appeals to musicians about using it? So um, yeah, I hope I hope this is interesting for all of you. Um, it's certainly something that I've wondered about for a long time. Um, you know, I, I discovered it myself kind of in my in my teens, and it was just like like opening up a, a, a different doorway into another world, into a, a kind of another dimension. Um, in a way that sort of, you know, just using using other open tunings um, just didn't, I don't know, just didn't seem to do as much for me anyway, personally. You know, I've, I've played around with kind of dad gad. Um, there was some uh, Annie DeFranco songs that I learned kind of quite early on and um, that I really love that use some quite different and strange open tunings but um you know and actually I did end up writing one of the songs for my band in one of those different tunings um so it was interesting but at the same time I felt like once you're once you're there you know once you've tuned every string to a different note um Yes, it makes it it kind of makes you think differently about how you would write a chord progression or how you'd put a chord progression together, maybe, for example. Um, but most of the time, for me anyway, I, I just ended up feeling maybe a little bit lost um, in terms of trying to try and put a riff together or, or trying to do a solo or something because the f I felt like I didn't know the fretboard anymore, <laughs> which of course you don't. Um, and unless you become very familiar with that tuning and therefore the sort of patterns, the scales and everything in that tuning, then you, you won't have that kind of familiarity 
um, and and it's like having to learn it all again. So, you know, with with drop D only being the the bottom E string that's down tuned to a D, um, you've more or less just just got a different root note. Um, particularly when you're playing kind of bar chords and power chords and actually um, it can make it an awful lot easier as you've seen because on both of those songs um, that they revolved around sort of three note chords um, which were basically just the bottom three strings um, it played kind of with with kind of one finger just moving up and down the fretboard so i suppose that is an obvious um that's one obvious answer to <laughs> why do musicians like drop d why do guitarists like the drop d tuning um why is it so appealing but you know okay it appeals to someone like me who is a little bit lazy and you know is a is not a, an amazingly talented guitarist or musician but it's an easy way into a different kind of sound but that's surely that's not the answer to the whole thing right because this has been used by many many fantastic musicians and guitarists and bands and so what is it that appeals to them and kind of particularly i'm kind of thinking particularly about the sort of 90s um rock scene where it, it seemed to kind of go around all of the the sort of seattle bands um you know what what was it in particular that fitted in with with that kind of music at that time so i'm, I'm gonna have a little bit of a look at uh you know where it where it came in from um and kind of how it how it developed um and how it kind of became so popular um, and look at the the different ways that it's been used um, and and how you could use it in in your own playing so drop d um what what am i talking about <laughs> what am i talking about um so i'm talking about tuning down the bottom e string on the guitar a whole tone down to a D. Um, so that gives you um, D, A and D on, on the bottom three strings of the guitar um, as opposed to E, A, D as you, as you would normally find. Um, it basically creates um, a D power chord on the open strings. So you, you have that right there already without having to fret any notes, without having to play a chord it's it's right there already um as i mentioned before you know open open tunings where you you tune each string to a different note um can can be used to create that that same kind of thing um that that's really come from kind of folk and blues playing um particularly playing that involves like a slide guitar hawaiian style kind of lap guitars and things um where you you're basically not fretting um a chord or holding a chord necessarily or or kind of fretting particular notes um you can you know as you strum the strings it, it sort of already creates a chord um and the slide can can kind of be uh used to you know to play an absolutely beautiful and amazing um music on on a guitar with an open tuning um but it yeah it, it's coming from folk it's coming from kind of country country and western style i think dolly parton used to use quite a lot of of open tunings um that's quite common anyway from uh, like folk and finger picking as well um open tunings were were kind of very very common in that style of music um and so kind of people that artists that sort of crossed over um from i suppose sort of like folk into rock for example like bob dylan um would have sort of popularized the use of of kind of more open tunings into the sort of beginnings of um 
of what we would call sort of rock music in in the 1960s um, but also as I say coming in from blues and that sort of slide style playing um, it was quite quite a common thing so it's not it's not that drop D was particularly kind of new or revolutionary um, in in the sort of 90s in the music that I'm going to be looking at um, but it does feel like it became more prevalent it became more popular it it almost became a kind of a standard thing to do in in that scene and in, in that style of music um, so where where were they taking their influences from where where was that kind of coming in from um, and if you think about some of the early you know some of the influences on bands like Nirvana Alice in Chains of course they're they're looking back at bands like the Beatles um, and Black Sabbath in particular in, in regard to Alice in Chains especially um, and kind of Led Zeppelin of course um, and if you kind of think about those bands they were experimenting with different tunings um, kind of throughout their throughout their careers really uh, on you know most of their albums but um, particularly later Beatles um, you know they, they do all sorts of things but um, I think quite famously um, the song Dear Prudence from uh, 1968 um, used a drop D tuning and then yeah Led Zeppelin kind of Moby Dick famously in drop D um, in the following year in 1969 so um, this is you know the beginning where we're starting to see the use of drop D in kind of what what we would start to think of as rock music and certainly the influences on the sort of 90s um, rock bands so coming from that kind of folk rock scene I suppose um, was one of the one of the biggest influences I think on the whole um, of the Seattle scene and um, but what one of certainly one of the biggest influences I think on on bands like Pearl Jam um, was Neil Young and uh, he famously used um, lots of, of non-standard tunings D modal in particular um, and drop D so that's where kind of some of the the influence is coming from I know that um, Soundgarden, um, as well as Alice in Chains, have cited um, Black Sabbath as a, as a major influence. However, Tony Iommi's signature um, tuning is actually drop C sharp, which he he kind of yeah down tuned um, all of the strings. So it's kind of C sharp, G sharp, C sharp, F sharp, A sharp, D sharp. Um, because it it sort of took the pressure off of off of his fingers um, after his after his accident. So um, although you know they kind of say, oh, that's where the the sort of drop D tuning influence um, is kind of from. So yeah, you have that kind of the influence of kind of the Beatles, Black Sabbath, Neil Young. Um, coming from the kind of 60s and 70s um, and then I think there's kind of like a period in the 80s where I think you know before before these bands broke because obviously they were they were all forming and just kind of starting out in the sort of mid to late 80s but during that time sort of the most popular rock bands um, you're kind of you know, your Bon Jovi, Def Leppard, Poison, um, all, all of those kind of, I really hate this term, but hair metal bands that were popular. Um, they, didn't, they didn't seem to kind of favour the tuning particularly. And I think there are a couple of reasons for that. Um, I think one reason is that 
a, a lot of the time, you know, the the songs, these songs in particular, one of the reasons that they were so popular and, um, you know, and, and kind of why these bands got so huge was because their their songs were so sort of commercial and radio friendly. Um, and in order to be sort of played on the radio, like the the kind of frequencies, you know, you, you need to really stay up in in sort of the higher end, I suppose, um, just in terms of the overall sound of your music. So sort of the higher your your singing voice is and sort of the higher the notes that you're playing on the guitar, sort of almost the better, really, um, in order to be kind of, you know, in order to sound good on the radio, um, which is, you know, airplay was was a hugely important factor in the success of of your music at that time. And so, you know, I would have imagined that, um, yeah, going down tuning was not going to help with that particularly. Um, and also there, you know, a lot of the music, um, even the kind of slower sort of more kind of big ballad style songs were still quite, um, you know, in their overall tone, they were sort of quite upbeat in a way. Um, <laughs> even, even if they were kind of heartbreaking, like ballad type songs, there, there would still be kind of like a tension and resolution in, in terms of the overall composition, the chord progressions, the music, the solos, the riffs, um, which would, you know, it, it wouldn't have worked with that kind of darker, heavier, sound arguably that um you know the the drop d kind of tuning was primarily sort of used for um so you know in in some ways it's quite maybe quite obvious why it wasn't necessarily favored very much in in terms of sort of 80s rock um i can't think of and and someone will probably say i'm wrong but i can't think of any guns and roses songs for example that um, that use drop D necessarily, and I think the other reason is because you know the actual sort of nature of the guitar playing um, in in those kind of bands was such that um, you know being a being a great player, being um, a sort of virtuoso player, was sort of the aim of the game in a way, and almost you know the climax of, of your song was the guitar solo. Um, and that would, would usually typically be played, you know, on, on the higher strings and almost kind of what was going on with the lower strings is sort of almost irrelevant <laughs> in a way, you know. Um, so, it, yeah, it just kind of wasn't a thing, really. I'm, I can't really think of particularly of any, yeah, Bon Jovi songs in drop D. I don't think there are any. Don't think there are any Def Leppard songs in drop D. Um, again, let me know. I could be wrong, um, but it certainly isn't. It's not something that I've come across in any of the songs, any of, you know, those songs that I've learned and played over the years. Um, they pretty much tend to stay in kind of standard tuning. Of course, um, Guns N' Roses are in uh, sort of E flat, so half a step down, but it's, you know, across all of the strings that they're, they're all half a step down. Um, it's just to kind of give, give it a kind of, um, I, I think it was actually to do with um, making it easier for, for Axel to sing. So, you know, and, and that's kind of true with a lot of, um, you know, a lot of rock bands with um, with male singers will very often kind of operate half a step down. In fact, Alice in Chains do as well. Um, so when they use drop D, they're already they're already going from um, half a step down. So it it gets a bit. <laughs> 
you know, it, it gets a bit tricky to compare apples with apples here. Um, but on the whole, yeah, I can't really think of like that many popular 80s rock songs that were in drop D. There are a couple of Queen songs, um, and this is and this is kind of um, where I think you know the the darkness particularly have have been sort of have taken their influence, um, particularly on growing on me. Um, the Queen song "Fat Bottom Girls," for example, is in drop D, um, and I think that's the that's kind of interesting um, how. A lot of these bands were were using it because it gives like a a, a lower, darker, heavier sound, um, which in some ways is kind of more more muddy um, at the bass end, you know, and and you could almost say it's more grungy. <laughs> it's just you know those kind of bass frequencies are fattened out because. You know, the string is looser, it's lower, um, and it's kind of creating, you know, a, a thicker sound, as it were. Um, and yet you have, you know, a classic rock band like Queen, and then a, a band that are kind of classic rock driven, if you like, like The Darkness, um, using Drop D in an entirely entirely different way to create a kind of really upbeat um <laughs> really kind of fun um fun rock sound um which isn't you know and and both of those songs um are not about kind of dark subject matter at all you know they're both quite cheeky tongue-in-cheek kind of songs um, with a very kind of bouncy rhythm as well and so the whole thing is it just has a completely different vibe a completely different feel and yet both of those effects have been achieved just by just by detuning the E string down to D um, so I find that kind of very interesting in terms of how actually how versatile and how flexible this is as a guitar tuning. I've been doing quite a lot of uh, reading and, and research recently actually about the whole Seattle scene and um, kind of the grunge bands in general. Um, <clears throat> and one of, the, one of the most interesting books that I've come across is this one. Everybody Loves Our Town, A History of Grunge. It's, um, it, it is a really great read and uh, I'm, you know, I'm still not kind of all the way through it yet. Um, there's some really fascinating stuff in here. And at one point, um, Kim Tile from Soundgarden is talking about actually um, how he discovered Drop D. And um, it's actually him, you know, it's quotes from him in, in his own words. Um, and it's very similar, actually, to what he said um, in an interview in <clears throat> kind of Guitar World. Um, this was only kind of last year, so September 23. He, uh, so this kind of very much lines up with what he said in this book. Um, he said, we did it because Black Sabbath did it, Neil Young did it, Van Halen did it. Um, are you going to tell Eddie Van Halen that he wasn't playing guitar properly? So in this particular article, um, he's talking about kind of people trolling him and them for kind of cheating um, by using drop D, which is just an absolutely ridiculous thing to say. Right, like what a that's a completely ridiculous perspective. Yes, in some ways, it does make playing chords easier in particular. Um, so yeah, it, it kind of enables you to play them faster, 
it makes changing chords easier. Sure. But, like, w what's wrong with that? <laughs> Why is, why is that a problem? I have absolutely no idea. I think it's kind of crazy that people would sort of view that as cheating somehow. Um, but anyway, as we've been kind of discussing, it's not, really, it's not really just a device or mechanism to make playing the guitar easier. It's a qualitati qualitatively different sound that it brings um, to the playing and, and kind of to the music. Um, and yeah, obviously, if Van Halen did it, he, he wasn't doing it to make it easier to play. <laughs> like, there is nothing that he couldn't play. So, yeah, I think, I think Kim's got a point here. Um, so, yes, uh, it had been around for a long time, as we've said. Um, and he kind of, he kind of outlines here, like the same, same things he said, sort of in the book, really, that he was friends with Mark Arm from Mud Honey because, of course, they were all, all of these bands were interconnected. Um, I'm going to kind of explore this a bit more um, in another video that I'm that I'm planning to make. But yeah, they were all friends. They all hung out. They all knew each other. So he said, kind of, at, at one point, um, Kim was in Soundgarden, um, Mark Arm was in Green River, which was, again, one of the kind of formative bands of the scene, um, along with kind of Stone Gossard and, and Jeff Ament from Pearl Jam. Um, Buzz Osborne from the Melvins um, was there too, and he said they were talking about like their favourite Sabbath songs. And it was actually um, Buzz that, that uh, sort of mentioned this tuning um, called Drop D that made everything sound darker and heavier. And I remember going home and being like, this is what Kim said, whoa, you don't say. <laughs> I started farting around and realised that you could make a power chord with just one finger. Playing them really fast up and down the neck became easy. Um, and he said, it's funny, I remember these purists and nitwits, I love that, nitwits, who would write into Guitar Magazine saying, Drop D is cheating, you're not really playing if you do that. I'd be sitting there wondering, what do you think this is? Monopoly? Is it like, do not pass go or head straight to jail just because you don't approve of that tuning? Uh, what do you mean it's not a proper way of playing guitar? No wonder you're sitting there writing angry letters to a guitar magazine instead of writing songs. Boom. Like, yeah, perfect. Perfect response, perfect answer. Um, why, you know, why are you wasting your life sitting there criticising what these absolutely awesome musicians are actually doing and sort of <laughs> the music that they're making... Um, became a, a global cultural phenomenon so you know I just think he was he was just absolutely right um but yeah by that point um you know by the time he started using it sort of um he'd he'd kind of passed that on if you like to um Jerry Cantrell from Alice in Chains um and it really you know, that is one of the kind of things that really, you know, dominates the the sound, I think, of, um, of Dirt, anyway. Um, it crops up on also 10 in, you know, in Pearl Jam's album. Um, and then obviously into Nirvana and, and kind of peppered through, you know, it's not, it's not a huge thing in their music but it certainly kind of it certainly was there um yeah he he kind of went home from that conversation with with mark arm and and wrote nothing to say um and then kind of from there it the the sort of secret source if you like that was drop d sort of started spreading around the other Seattle bands. And certainly, you know, 
knowing that kind of they all knew the same people and they would have been having the same conversations certainly kind of stone gossard would have um been in on on that as well um and kind of took that through into pearl jam when when they formed so um it it kind of almost it almost kind of went viral in a way <laughs> because of how these bands all interacted and sort of cross-pollinated um with each other even though their music was all very different um but with that kind of Beatles, Sabbath, Neil Young, psychedelic influence, if you like. It's just that they had kind of different sensibilities where sort of Nirvana had their punk sensibilities. Um, Alice in Chains were coming from a more kind of metal perspective, um, heavily influenced also kind of by, by Kiss and the earlier sort of 80s rock bands that had come before especially when you look at their previous bands that they'd been in prior to Alice in Chains and again I'm gonna make kind of a separate video covering covering that kind of I think relationship really between sort of 80s and 90s rock and how actually one didn't kill off the other it was almost like a a kind of natural progression but anyway um the whole kind of drop D thing then sort of went around that scene and all the bands that came out of it that then became absolutely huge. Um, all of them in their own ways, you know, they, it became a cultural phenomenon and a, a kind of global force. Um, and therefore, you know, everything that came after that and was influenced by that you know, then you, you then had the continued use um, of, of the drop D tuning. Some of the most famous and popular um, songs kind of post the 90s and, and the sort of grunge scene um, to use drop D have of course been Foo Fighters songs. Dave Grohl <laughs> um, having kind of probably made the most famous use of, of that tuning um, to write, you know, some of the the most popular Foo Fighters songs that, that he's actually ever written, um, ever long, for example. Um, and yeah, so, you know, it, it, it kind of, it kind of continued to be used um, throughout the kind of later 90s and early 2000s. And I think the the kind of genre in which it's, it's kind of shown up the most since then um, is actually new metal, um, but also kind of bands like Tool. Um, so it, it was kind of already a thing in metal because of the roots that it had from kind of going back to Black Sabbath and the kind of early um, metal bands. But, you know, so it, it had kind of always been a thing in metal so it's no real surprise that it's you know its popularity continued into the new metal scene um but just a quick you know a quick cursory google um and actually you know the riff that i that i played on a short the other day last resort papa roach that's in drop d um linkin park did a lot of songs with drop d as well um and there were kind of you know other bands that that were around at the time not necessarily part of that grunge scene but like very very famous and and very you know hugely popular songs um that were in drop d such as um killing in the name of which is you know every it's got to be you know in every guitarist uh sort of top favorite riffs to play right and um you know, obviously by kind of Rage Against the Machine. Um, Tom Morello, amazing guitarist, you know, absolutely love them. And one of the reasons why that is so fun to play and, you know, apart from the fact that it just sounds awesome um, and, and heavy and everything like that is, you know, because it's in drop D. <laughs> That's kind of what, what gives it, you know, its appeal really. Um, I can't imagine how you would have written it otherwise so um 
yeah, those those kind of new metal bands um, made quite a lot of use of it as well. And um, I feel like, you know, that's, that's sort of the last real um, guitar-based genre that, um, you know, that has been sort of culturally important or mainstream um, because, you know, everything has changed and moved on so much since then and so kind of most of the the sort of music um that i'm talking about has uh, kind of since petered out and um in terms of, of kind of mainstream popularity um so i kind of think that's where the sort of where the the drop d story ends more or less um of course you know it's never going to go away it's always going to be around and i think it's something that um particularly young guitarists, you know, starting out learning um, today, you know, they, they may or may not kind of know about this. And uh, it's certainly something that, you know, when you're starting out as a beginner, um, it's, it's something that's going to give you a whole, it's going to open up so many different possibilities for you. Um, just knowing that if you down tune that one string, um, you're you're going to be able to access a completely different sound on your guitar. So I think it's really important um, to kind of point this out <laughs> in case whoever is watching this maybe maybe wasn't aware and didn't know. Um, although I know that you you all are you know very very good guitarists anyway and so you will have all come across this um you know i was listening to the the richie kotzen album and the first song um the opening track cheap shots is in drop d and um it just absolutely i just feel like that song absolutely rocks it absolutely rocks and i just sat down and thought why is this such a great opening track um, what is it that gives that riff? It's real, you know, real punch, <laughs> as it were. Like, it is that uh, sort of the sound of, of kind of glam rock, in a way. And it is coming from, you know, being driven by that drop D riff. So, um, you know... It's not just uh, something for, you know, grunge influenced or, you know, metal guitarists to, to use to kind of make their songs sound very, very heavy. Um, it can also be used um, in that more sort of classic rock inspired and influenced way. So sort of along the lines of Queen, um, as the darkness have done, and as Richie Cotson does on, on cheap shots, um, it can just, you know, give your, give your song and give your, your riff and your chord progression just that bit more oomph and, and kind of power. Um, so it's, it's super versatile, it's super easy to use. Um, it's always been one of my favorite tunings and um, you know, I would I would encourage anyone who's not yet kind of explored and experimented with it um, to just, you know, down tune that string and off you go. So that's my overview of drop D. Um, if you if you are familiar with it, um, how did you come across it? What band or, or song um, was the first one that you'd heard in drop D? Or what are some of your favourite songs that are in Drop D? Um, let me know in the comments. I'd be really interested to hear from you, as always. OK, thanks, everyone.